Hi everyone. There are a few different approaches to hunting down bugs. There's the change things at random and see what happens approach, which is popular with beginners but not very effective. Then there's puts debugging, where you add code to print things out at certain points and try to diagnose the problem based on the output. This is a fine approach, despite some annoyances. For example, when you don't know what the problem is yet, it can be hard to guess what you need to print out. Sometimes you have to dig through lots of unrelated output to find the exact thing that you're looking for. It often involves editing lots of different files, maybe even files inside of third-party gems. And at the end, once you've solved the issue, you have to go back and remove all that printing code that you added. There's also raise debugging, which is the same as puts debugging, except that you raise exceptions with messages instead of printing output. In this screencast, I want to show you a different, more sophisticated way to debug Ruby code using Bybug. Bybug is a debugger for Ruby 2. Debuggers allow you to pause execution at any given line of code, inspect the state of your running app, and run code one line at a time. You can step through the code as it runs, observing everything that happens. I found that debuggers are good for diagnosing nasty, complicated bugs, and bugs in code bases that you're not familiar with. For simple problems in your own code, it's often quicker just to print out a variable or two. But when the problem's deep within a third-party gem, or maybe within code that you're not used to and you don't know how it works, a debugger can save you a lot of time and effort. Bybug is super easy to install. Just add it to your gem file, bundle install, and you're ready to go. You probably don't want Bybug to be available in production, because if you do trigger it somehow, it will hang the entire app. So put it in the development or test group. Depending on your setup, you might need to require Bybug somewhere as well, although this is often handled for you. And to start the debugger, just call the Bybug method from anywhere in your code. It will pause execution of your app and present a prompt for you to work with. Now let's take a look at Bybug in action, helping to diagnose a failing test. So here's the failing test. The details aren't super important, but uh, what it does is it takes an array of strings and it's expecting to turn that into an array of symbols. So I'm gonna start by running the test and I see that it fails on expect result to be, fa uh, be valid. This is the line here that's failing. So it's not an exception, it's generating a result. It's just not the result I was expecting. So I'm gonna put by bug here just before the result is generated and run the test again. This drops me into the console and I can start poking around and looking at variables and seeing uh, what's in them. So I have a look at an array of symbols first. That looks fine to me. Have a look at coercer. That also looks fine. Um, now I want to see the actual result. So I'm going to have to run this line of code that it stopped on by typing in next. Okay, so result should exist now. Check that it is in fact invalid and that's true. Um, have a look at the error, that's a bit complicated, so I wanna narrow it down a bit. And here I see the error is something to do with the symbol coercer, uh, symbolic name is coercion failure, and the value is a string A. So that's kind of what I'm looking for at the moment. Now that I know what I want, I'm going to quit Bybug and run the test again. And I'm back where I started, but now I'm gonna step into the coercer call instead of stepping over it. So I'm gonna see what happens inside coercer.call. Okay, so I'm looking for the cause of the error, just stepping over the code. Um, nothing here, so I'll step into the validate elements method call. Um, nothing immediately obvious here, so I'm stepping through, still stepping through. I'm going to step into the element schema dot call. And here I see that symbolic name coercion failure. So this looks like the error that I saw. And this is triggered by a coercion failed exception being raised. So I want to step into this line of code and see what's raising that exception. Okay, so now I'm in symbol coercer, which I saw earlier. Value is A, the argument. Um, this looks exactly like the, the problem here. And you can see a line of code commented out for some strange reason. And instead of converting the string into a symbol, it's jumping straight to invalid here. So if I have a look in invalid, invalid is raising coercion failed, which is triggering the error. So now that I know what the problem is, I can quit out of Bybug, go back to the code, open up the file, 
and just uncomment that line and that should uh, convert the the strings into symbols and make the test pass. So I go back to the test, delete bybug, run it again, and now you can see that the test passes. So next time you're hunting down an elusive bug, give bybug a try. This was a Ruby Pigeon screencast by Tom Dowling. Check out rubypigeon.com for more Ruby goodness. Thanks for watching and happy debugging.